Hello everyone. So I want to share a utility I created that I use a lot during tool development. It's called the HDK Wrangle and it pretty much does what you expect. It lets you write C++ code and use the HDK right from within Houdini. The obvious advantage is that you don't need to compile outside of Houdini and don't need to relaunch every time you make a change. So you can just keep your Houdini session open and keep working. The tool takes care of a lot of the setup work for you so you don't need to declare parameters and classes like you would with traditionally writing a node. Um, it's great for modifier type operations, but it's not able to do more complex things like making a solver or writing something like a paint sop. Um, that requires you to write an actual node that's its own object, and you have to write a regular plugin in that case. So now I just want to give a very general tour of the tool set. At the top, you'll see we have this library name, and you can name your library wherever you want. Just make sure it's something unique so that when it goes ahead and compiles it, it's not overwriting other plugins you may have written. So I can call this something like my new tool version one. And that's totally fine, as long as we don't have another plugin that's named this exact same thing. Then right next to it, you'll see this compile button. So when you click that, it will actually create a library based on this name with all the code that we've written. So by default, the tool is a very simple transform node. So if you scroll to the bottom, you can see we have X, Y, and Z. So it can transform an X, Y, and Z, just like that. And these parameters are actually created dynamically. So in the C++ tab, you'll see we have this quick myself function. And this is the main function that Houdini is going to call when it loads your plugin and tries to run it. So you can't name this something different. It has to be called quick myself, but it has a few arguments. And you'll see we have argument float x, float y, and float z. So these directly correlate to these parameters that were created down here. And you'll also see that we have this GU detail pointer GDP argument. And what this is, is actually the geometry you're piping into the very first input. So now we can actually um, get data from this, we can modify it and then output it at the very bottom of our node. You can also declare additional attributes, sorry, not attributes, but um, arguments here. So for example, you can declare an integer, call it my int. You can also declare a vector type. So if you want to do something like ut vector 3D or a 3D vector, it's the pointer, I'll call it my vec. And you can also declare string types. So if I were to call character pointer and call it my string, spell my string. And then when we go ahead and compile, we'll go ahead and compile our new function with all these new arguments. And at the very bottom, you'll see we now have a new my int, my vec, and my string. So now when you fill these in with value, they automatically get passed into the function as arguments you can use them however you want. So if you wanted to also include other um, inputs, for example, if you wanted to get information from input two, three, and four, all you need to do is just copy this one little um, argument here, paste it here, name it something different. Call it my second input. You can name it whatever you want. And then this needs to be a const because we can't modify the second, third, and fourth input, only the first input, the main one we're working on. So it needs to be declared as const so that we can't modify it. And it won't be the second input just because I kind of named it that way. It'll be the second input because the second GU detail pointer that we declared in our functions argument list. So I can also fetch the third one and just call it something like, oh, I don't know, foo, for example. This will be the third input just because the third one in the list. So I'll get rid of these because we don't need them right now. Additional things you can do is you have the other um, kind of sections of your application here. So you have the precompiler, which you're going to use to declare um, like what headers you want to include. You can also do things like things like that. So you can define additional values. Then you have an actual header file, which you can use to declare additional uh, classes. You can see by default it's commented out, but you have this kind of thread object. So you can actually do, you create the exact same transform tool that comes by default, but just have it be multi-threaded through this object. But you can ad uh, declare additional classes if you want to have your own custom objects for whatever reason. In the main C++ tab, where you're going to write the program that the which Houdini is actually going to look for and actually run, then you have the C++ functions tab, which you can actually use to create additional functions, as many as you want. And then once you define and write them, you can use them in your main C++ program. You don't need those right now, so I'll clear them. Then finally, we have this Python tab. And this is additional Python code that's going to run after the 
um, main plugin that's written in C++ is going to run. And you'll see by default it comes with this return value. And what this is, is the value returned by your main quick mysop function. Right now it's void, so this is just going to be like a none object. But if I were to return something like an integer, and just return zero, and I can't spell, return zero. So now when this runs, it's going to return zero to this return my value. And I usually use this for things like error handling. I usually give uh, various integers that are return a certain error code and then use Python to actually do little like pop-up UIs or put a little badge on the uh, plugin itself, um, just notify the user of various things that might have gone wrong, like if they miss an attribute or something like that. But you can use this wherever you want. Just know that it always runs after your uh, main program runs and it will contain the value of whatever your cook myself function has. And it can be, it can return any value you can think of, even like strings if, or vectors if you wanted to. Uh, but by default, it'll just be void. So we don't need anything right now to be returned, so let's clear that out. And that's that. So, like I said before, there's also additional examples you can have. You can do things like the minpos function. So you can see here at the very top, it's actually gonna be grabbing the second input. And we have this new max distance. We can control um, how close the two surfaces need to be before the points snap to the surface. So if I have my squab, and I plug in my grid here and compile this function. Then at the bottom, this max distance, I can increase that and you'll see as long as the points are within the max distance to that grid, it'll get snapped. And I also made it so that you can transform it before the min pause function happens. So you can kind of move it away and see just how that works. And like I said before, another um, examples you have, like how to delete and create polygons, how to create brand new attributes on points, polygons, detail, anything like that. Uh, how to do multi-threading, which is pretty much the exact same thing we see commented out in the default here, except this time it's actually implemented and running. And you can also learn how to create and edit BDDs using HDK. So I'm hoping with this tool that it just allows people to more easily be able to learn how the HDK works and how to actually use it without having to um, worry about setting up a development environment and you know compiling plugins and learning how to deal with all that. Being able to compile directly in Houdini without having to restart it or every single time you make a change is extremely powerful and a lot quicker to kind of iterate. So I use this a lot for prototyping before I go ahead and actually write like a real node if I need to. And, and most of the time I kind of just like leave this OTL as is and just put it in a subnet and deploy it out into production uh, just because it is easy enough and it's fast enough that I can do that. So you don't have to write a node from scratch using like, traditional means and compiling it through like command line tools. You can do it right within Houdini in this tool.